this desk has been around all my life. It was bought by my father shortly after the war when my parents were setting up home and it quickly found its way into my bedroom as a child. Uh, about ten years ago, one of my friends came round and asked if it was by somebody called Barnsley. He knew more about furniture than me, which set me thinking. And I bought a book and did my research and it made me wonder if indeed it was by either Barnsley or by Jimson. So, over to you. I think that the, the, I can start with the date of this. I think it's 1910, something like that. So relatively early of that. It's late for the Cotswold School, if you like, but early for the, uh, relatively early for the Barnsley Jimson type piece of furniture. But what I'm going to do is quote Ernest Jimson's great nephew, Donald Jimson. Right. Because he simply, he's often called in to be asked about, you know, is this by Jimson or Barnsley? Mm. And his reaction is, most of the time, I don't know. He can't tell. The books mm. don't really tell you. And I don't think we know. They didn't sign their furniture. Mm. There are no labels on it at all. <laughs> uh, let's have a look at the inside first, just to see. Hmm. You say you had it in your bedroom. Oh, it looks like it. We're using it for homework. Uh, mugs, I should think. Cups. <laughs> And some of the, what a shame the hinges have been replaced. Yes, that's one of the, that's one of the things we, we want to get sorted. Yeah, interesting. It would be quite a problem to sort out, but it's worth doing. Mm. So let's get back to the question, who designed it? It's, a, it's very strong, isn't it? And that when you actually stand back from it and look at it, and that wonderful wishbone structure underneath, yes. it's very, very good indeed. So clearly it's by one of this arts and crafts school, and your, your friend was on the right track. Mm. I think this type of furniture is, is really underrated. It's English furniture at its best. I mean, Jimson himself knew William Morris, mm. so, and it was Morris who told him to go um, with, uh, with Barnsley to London, to a ar school of architecture, where there were people like Norman Shaw, some of the great architects of the late Victorian era, and they've carried that through into the, well, the last century now, into the 20th century, that tradition of, cra of, of crafts making. And there, you know, there are no nails, virtually. It's all handmade, as you expect in the early days, 16th, 17th century, the idea of all these dowels or pins here is typical of the arts and crafts movement, back to basics, and, and all the better for it. I think it's lovely. Made, of course, of solid oak. Um, you don't find much around. What would you pay for it today? Well, if it were Barnsley, I would think it might be worth about 5000 but I don't know. That's a guess. And if it were Jimson? I would have thought something similar, but I'm not. About the same, I guess. Yes. <laughs> um, I think that if it was, I think it would make that at auction in this present state. So I think if you're insuring this, probably even seven or eight thousand, and it's going up, 